Well, the Bible says that God has hardened his heart, Pharaoh's heart. He did it on purpose. Why? Because after three attempts, he gave him three chances. Pharaoh said no. God has hardened his heart. Yes. But in the meantime, as you can see the progress of Moses' life, Moses was becoming stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And he became bold at the last plague. He came boldly to the to, to, to Pharaoh says, Tonight, your son, your only son, is going to die. And he was now speaking like a prophet. Not like this, Lord, what should I tell him? Who, I, who are you? What is your name, Lord? Show me your ID. Let me make a picture. I'll show it to them. Let me present to them you. Who are you? Because neither me neither them. How are we going to be, 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 don't believe? How can we believe the things that we don't see? Lord, you see from which point God has brought Moses up? From the le very low point. Which way? Not through dreams and visions. All right? Did Moses go through the blood? Yes. The blood of the lamb was on his doorpost too. That is salvation. Is that right? Did Moses go through a, 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 a Red Sea, which is departed? It's water baptism. There you go. He went through all these things. He did all these things. All right. But then, that was not enough. There was a wilderness experience. Wilderness experience. So looking at, what, looking at what God said to Moses is very important and interesting. He said, first of all, when Moses began to fearfully ask in God, what should I tell people? Who are you? How can I present them to you? You know what God said to Moses? To Moses, he said this way in verse 14. Tell him that I am that I am. Hmm. Interesting. All right, I am that I am. Okay, Moses may, may begin to proceed himself a little bit. I am that I am. Okay, God, what, do you try, what are you trying to say to me? I am that I am. It means you are everything we need, right? You are everything we need. But they will not understand that. See, I had a little encounter with you now, and now I begin to realize that you can do all things. You are everything. But will they believe me? Will they believe and say, well, what are you talking about? He can do everything? We, is it everything that we need? We don't need everything that God is offering us. All we need is to be set free from Egypt. But look. We'd like to have our own lifestyle and, and freedom. We don't need everything. We don't want everything. Are you following me? But to Moses, God said, I am everything to you. So you mean everything like uh, you will become everything to my life? What does it mean, God? I, I don't really, really understand. He says, when you're going to get into the wilderness... After all the miracles done, after I will set you free, you will understand who I, what I'm talking about. Because only in the wilderness you will realize my name. But to them, he says, they don't understand this point right now. Tell them that I'm the God of your fathers. So that they may identify myself. Oh, he is our Jewish God. Fantastic. So we're not expecting anybody else. He is the God of our fathers. Okay. Zeitgesund. It's working. It's working. He is the God. He is our God. But I am that I am. I'm not sure if the Jewish people will understand there. But to Moses he said, I am that I am. He says, Moses, I am everything you need. I am everything you need. All right? He 
He says, I am has sent you. See what he said? He says, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I am has sent me to you. Okay? To assure people that God's name is above every name, that his existence is everlasting, and that they could be trustful enough that he is a God of the way out. All right? And what God wanted to say, I am that I am, I am that you everything that you need after that I am the God of your fathers, is to say that uh, remember, people, that only his strength and the power is needed. Only his strength and the power is needed. And I think this message is also for each, each and every one of us today. In that wonderful name, I am that I am, as the, this is why I chose to sing this song, is to get the platform ready. This is my name, forever, from generation to generation. My full name is I am. God said this way, that in that way, I am, that is everything you need because my strength and only my strength and power is needed. Amen. Now, so they would have a lack of understanding, of course, in this kind of area because you've got to be a little bit more spiritual to understand these things and to trust. Moses was a bit struggling himself with this idea, but he began to understand and, 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 and realize, okay, this is who is sending me there, the God that can do all things, and now I have the name, and now I have to say something uh, to the people that he is not a strange God to them because he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it's interesting that it was not the words of Moses. God was putting into Moses his words. He says, that's what you shall say. You following me? He says, it's not that it's up to you, Moses, but these are the words that you are going to say. All right? These are the words that you are going to say. So God was teaching Moses what to speak to these people correctly. But something that is interesting that he said concerning Pharaoh. Because, but to Pharaoh you say, the God of the Hebrews is commanding you to let my people go. It was not I am. It was not just God of your fathers or God of your neighbors. He says, God of the Hebrews speaking to you and telling you to let the people go. The other day I had a phone call from a, from a lady from Alberta and she said, who are Christians? I said, it's very simple. I said, what denomination is Christian? I said, it's not about denomination. Christian is somebody who is following Christ. Who belongs to him. Amen? Amen. That's why what it says, Christ. Messianic, Christ. Are the Baptist Christians, she says? Are the Pentecostals are Christians? I said, if they follow in Christ, they are Christians. If they are not... They're not. So just as God said to Moses, speak to Pharaoh, tell him that these are the people, the Hebrew people, the, let them go. How did, how did he say there? The God of the Hebrews. All right? He identified them the God of the Hebrews, not of the Egyptians, but Hebrews. Amen. Why did he say that? Because at that time, he became a God of Hebrews and only. 
All right? Now, he is the God of Christians, believers. All right? So that's the identification. You are Christian because you are believing, you believe in Christ. And that's the only name that we should understand. Christians, believers. Because you believe in Christ. That's why there will be a diff, there will be, there's this kind of difference in the world. There are Christians and not Christians. Believers and not believers. Amen. It's whom and what you follow. In your life. Praise be to God. But at this point of time, the Jewish people, they had a lack of understanding in that word, I am that I am. So God has identified himself to them as the God of your fathers. By the way, interesting enough, it's still that way. Because the Jewish people, they carry that, you know, stamp on them that God... The same God, as we serve today, he's still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You notice that? Amen. It's written in both tes testaments, old and new. He still identify himself, identifies himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of their fathers. And it's only the Jewish people can say that way. Amen? Because it's truly, he is the God of their fathers, the Hebrews. <laughs> Precious God. So, let's move on. Tell him that I am the God of your fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he is not that he is not a strange God to them. He is not a strange God to them. And his perfect will is to set them free, to deliver them, to heal them, to help them. Just obey his voice. Amen. Going back to that person, the missionary, they brought this man, and they were all watching what is going to happen. In the natural, this man was in big trouble, because to have this kind of miracle, it has to be God, pure God, and only God, and, and just God. The guy had nothing left to do. He was in the midst of people that could have killed him right now. His faith escalated to its highest. He had got nothing to lose. Amen? He got nothing to lose. And, and that is the point that we need to listen to. He said, God, <laughs> he says, I, did, I, I, I didn't say this. <laughs> you said that. In your word. I, I, I didn't come to present myself and, and to, to tell him what I think. You said in your word that you do these things. Well, Lord, your servant is in your hands. It's up to you. What I believe, I believe that this, this man is going to get healed. And he took a bold step and leap of faith. That was the faith that he probably never had in his life. It was a bold, real faith in what God said because his life was on the balance. And he said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Before their eyes, the guy stood up. The sickness was completely dissolved. He got sick, and the whole tribe got saved. Absolutely. Absolutely. What I'm trying to say through this, 
I got three different things that I try to bring together in this message. Remember what I said about Moses, how God began to, begin to train him? And what God began to do with him? How fragile Moses was at the beginning? And it what took God to bring him up? Amen? Why did God do this? What was the purpose that he has chosen Moses to play such a role and to make out of him such a man, such a powerful man, loving God, trusting God? And actually, I believe that Moses did not die. God doesn't kill people, is that right? I believe what, actual, what, what really actually happened in that Mount of Horeb, I believe, that God took him, ruptured him as Enoch. He took him to himself. He just didn't kill him first and then took him. He didn't have to do that. He just took him. But, and the Bible says that he buried, God buried the body that nobody knows where. God was able to make out of this man a man that God really wanted to see and to make. Why? Is because this is how much God is interested in you and I. That's his love. Remember I said at the beginning, remember that God loves you? Yes, he does. But his love is tough love. Because his love is pure and solid. Solid love. When God loves, listen to me, when God loves, he loves not hypocritically. He loves not just to paddle you back. He loves not just to make you feel better. He loves you because he wants to make out of you the man of God. A child that will be disciplined, set free, not rebellion, Believe in trust in God. It's not because God wanted to use you. No, God is not a God doesn't have a factory to produce people to use. God loves us for God so loved the world. He loves us so much, and He He is making out of us His children, children that would be reflecting Jesus and only. That they will trust him, believe him, stand, do, obedient, in fellowship. That they will follow Christ just the way he is. That's the point number one. Why God is doing what he's doing. With the nation of Israel, it was a totally different story. Out of all people, God has chosen just three. Out of these millions of people, God was able to work only on three or four or maybe a dozen of people. As you know, they were Caleb, Moses, Joshua, 70 elders, and so on. Just a little number. But God loves everybody equally. God is willing to make out of us everything and anything if we will allow him. But if you're going to start allowing God to do something, listen to this. We're not talking about religious service to God. We're talking about born again experience. If we are born again, get ready for work. Well, friends, uh, I believe this program in this week is uh, just as powerful as the others. And can I encourage you today, I mean, this information, uh, revelation that God has given us uh, is vitally important. Why don't you just order today a DVD, three programs on one DVD, all this program in this week. It's only $15.00. And shipping is included either, actually. So it's going to be a benefit to your Christian library. 
You can watch it over and over again. Open the Bible with me. You can open the Bible and go through the scriptures and let God feed your life. Let God feed your life with His Word because His Word is important. Hallelujah. I just want to pray for you right now. I just sense the anointed. Thank you, Father. I just give you the praise and the glory in the name of Yeshua, Jesus our Messiah. I give you the praise, my Jesus. Just touch people's lives today. Lord, heal their sickness. Heal their disease in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray that I just rebuke that spirit of cancer over your life in the name of Jesus. Whoever is watching us, I speak healing to that cancers, uh, cancer cells in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke that spirit of cancer over you in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for healing this person right now in the name of Jesus. And somebody just knows, just been healed. I think you have cold or, or allergy. I don't know. Your eyes are tearing too. And God says enough is enough. And you are healed by the stripes of Yeshua Jesus. By His blood we are healed. By His stripes we are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Somebody's abdomen. I think the cancer area is, your, is in your abdomen. And God is healing you. Just stretch out your hands. And let God touch your life in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for healing that person. It, I think it's a woman. Uh, and I believe that she's healed in the mighty precious name of Jesus. Thank you for healing that cancer. And somebody's breast just being healed in Jesus' mighty name as well. God has come to conquer all evil and sickness and disease. Don't be afraid to stretch out your hands to God. To God and believe for a miracle. Let God touch your life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Say just thank you, Father, for healing me today in Jesus' mighty precious name. And somebody's heart just being healed as well. In the name of Jesus. Friends, we come into, uh, um, actually, uh, we just finished Ottawa, but we're going to come to Calgary and uh, with our team. And that for miracle meetings, revival meetings, 14th and 15th of August. And we are going to be at the Dream Center. I remember, my friends, as you see the information on your screen, let me just talk about this. In 2010, we, were, we, we, we rented the space as well there from um, um, Dream Center. And I remember a man who is a very dear friend of mine right now. He, he came for the first time to our meetings with cancer in his body. And God has touched his life. And with two meetings, God delivered him and he set him free. And he is cancer free. God can do things for you. Remember, come and join us from wherever you are. BC, Saskatchewan, Alberta. Remember, Calgary, 14th and 15th of August. Two nights of Revival Miracle Meetings at the Dream Center. This information is there. Thank you so much. God bless you, friends. Thank you for your support. We covet your support. We need your support. We need your help. Why, why don't you become a partner today? We have different, you can, you can become a partner in different ways. You can give on monthly, you can send us a letter, you can give on visa. Uh, actually, we can withdraw uh, from your visa on a monthly basis. So, so all secured, a lot of people doing that. And also we have um, 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 withdrawal. It's right from your bank. You send us a um, post dated check and that could be done as well. Whichever way you want to do it, thank you so much. We appreciate, appreciate your support. Believe me, we do need your support. So thank you so much for being a partner. God bless you. Stay tuned for tomorrow's program. And remember that God still heals and delivers and sets free. Shalom to you and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. So
the Lord provided It's all through His love A place for us to rest Place to find the answers In the hour of distress There's never any reason For you to give up in despair and breathe his name for he will surely meet you there in the presence of Jehovah God House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.